Hello students and welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Shafali Nagpal, Associate Professor at Human Resource Development Center, Bhagat Phool Singh Mahila Vishwadhyale, Sonipat. We are studying the module Managing Culture and Diversity. And today we will study the module Fundamentals of Performance Management System and Cultural Diversity at Workplace. On the completion of this module, you would be able to understand the aims, essentials and principles of performance management system as well as to understand the intricacies of PMS in context to the cultural diversity at the workplace. Let us begin. Organizational strategic choices are viewed in context of the environmental drivers such as changing labor market composition, global economy, shift in the service economy and the legal and the governmental pressures. Analyzing the environmental drivers can help the organization determine the specific benefits it expects to gain from its diversity management and how these are linked to the overall business strategy. The companies have also developed an outlook on diversity that enables them to incorporate the employee's perspective into the main workforce of the organization and to enhance the work by rethinking primary task and redefining the market, product, strategies, mission, business practices and even cultures. Such companies are using the learning and effective paradigm for managing the diversity and by doing so are tapping the diversity true benefits. Performance is considered as a parameter to test the effectiveness of the employee development module of the organization. It is studied based on the certain parameters like employee satisfaction in terms of the organizational environment and the perks and the benefits to be provided to the employees. The term performance incorporates the behavior as well as the monetary outcomes. Bumbatch views the performance more comprehensively by encompassing both behavior and results. He is of the view that behaviors as outcomes of their own right which can be judged apart from the results. Performance is an impact, being it is concerned with the competencies of the manager that are relevant to his or her performance. It is preparedness in the mind of the manager. Emphasizing on the variables pertaining to the different organizational goals, these aspects are considered. They don't work unless you do. Relating emphasis on the nature of the relationship with the members of the role network vertical, horizontal or otherwise. It is directly linked towards the development of ideologies for the employees who are directly concerned with the organizational goals. The performance has a connection with the special potential and how best it can be realized by the individuals. Organization these days are now focusing on retaining or relating to the organizational goals with that of the individual goals. With the advent of the inclusive management, the goals of the individual job is aligned completely with that of the organizational goals. Activities which are centered around the particular task are referred as involvement of the manager and supervisor in achieving the allocated task or meet expectations in a given task environment. To understand the potential maximization concept, it is very important to link with the supervisor's performance. Performance in a role refers to the extent to which the managers achieve the purpose for which the role is created. Choice, not chance, they say, determines the destiny. A manager in his or her task environment could be subject to some of the influences and factors shown in the exhibit. Let us see the role performance framework. It includes the input variables which are role, purpose or objective, stakeholder expectations, input role, or vendor contribution, role technology. Throughout the variables, the throughput is, which includes the organization relevant environment also, include competing and collaborating colleagues, manage potential, which is again contributed by the role design, managerial leadership, group climate. And the output variable is role output or manager performance. Role Performance Framework In this framework, as you can see in the figure 1, the roles are clearly categorized into the organization relevant environment, which further discusses its objective, stakeholder expectations, role technology 
the input role or the vendor contribution are considered as the input which are interlinked to the performance of the manager. The external forces which affect the individual performances can be termed as the role design, manager potential, managerial leadership, competing and collaborating colleagues and the group climate. The team climate hold a special consideration. These realistic goals, roles, expectations play an integral role in managing the performance. The factors which are integrated within the organizational structures are called as the internal factors, which can be considered as role design and manager's potential. In order to enhance these factors, manager can identify the fit which an interrelationship between the manager's capacity, resources, role requirements. Performance appraisal system would assume these as throughputs factor. The end result of the entire cycle is the role output, which can also be termed as performance. The basic principles of effective performance management system. The performance appraisal should be transparent and healthy exercise, which results in effective functioning of the organization. It functions on certain principles, which are mentioned as transparency, employee development and empowerment, values, congenial work environment, external environment. Another is transparency, which includes the fair policies relating to the increment and transfer acts as a tool for increased confidence of the employees. Performance appraisal is a tool for creating strong and visible policies for bringing about the change in the organizational structure. Employee development and empowerment includes the employee participation in the process of performance appraisal and is responsible for the development of the organization. The policies pertaining to the performance appraisal should have an ultimate objective of employee's development. Values are Developing the trust of the employee leads to the high motivation of the employee. The value structure of the organization is built when the employees are aware about the organizational objectives. Fair and equal opportunity to every employee should create the foundation for the employee development. Next is congenial work environment. The management need to create a conducive and congenial work culture and climate that will help the people to share their experience, knowledge and information to fulfill the manager's aspiration and achieve the organizational goals. The manager employee should be well informed about the organizational mission, objectives, values and the framework for managing and developing the individuals and team for the better performance. External environment. The external environment should be conducive enough to take care of the organizational performance system. It should be integrated with the framework of policies. Types of performance appraisal system. The performance appraisal system is usually designed as per the organizational structure and designing. Each and every organization has different approach towards the performance management system. Basically, the performance appraisal system can be categorized into two major categories of traditional methods and modern methods. Types of performance appraisal system. First is traditional method. The traditional method of performance appraisal system is inclusive of the age old methods like numerical rating scales, wherein an employee performance is rated as per the number and ranking. In this method, the rating is usually done by the supervisor or subordinate. In the recent innovation in this method, Self rating scales are also introduced for own rating of the performance. This method is more suitable in the environment where employees are not involved in the decision making process. Second is the modern method. The modern method of performance appraisals are inclusive of the modern methods wherein all the aspect of the employee development are considered. This is primarily executed when the performance of the employees assessed and discussed in thorough detailing of the employee profile with the manager in terms of communicating their weaknesses and strength observed in the employee. It is also useful in identifying opportunities for the employee to develop professionally. Cultural diversity at workplace. Diversity consists of the multiple factors that affect an individual's internal self as well as the external self. 
It includes age, gender, culture, religion, personality, social status and sexual orientation. Diversity within the culture known as multiculturalism is the combination of the diversified individuals from different cultures and societies. Cultural diversity factors such as ethnicity, language, religion, race, sexual orientation, gender, age. The company started to embrace the corporate diversity in the early 2000s. This was due to many trends in the demographics and changing workforce. This mixture idea of diversity at all inclusive mixture of differences and similarities. Cultural diversity at workplace. The mixture of idea of diversity is conceptualized in terms of macro micro continuum by R. Roosevelt Thomas as follows. The micro perspective look at the individual's component and a macro perspective look at the mixture. To get at the true nature of diversity which include comprising the differences as well as the similarity requires an ability to assume both perspectives simultaneously. The micro facilities identification of differences and the macro enhances the ability to see similarities. Cultural diversity at workplace. The cultural diversity affect the organization in a way that it is directly linked towards the market share of the organization. Diversity in the term of culture and gender add credit to the organization value system. Acceptance from the society is one major indicator for adding the culturally diversified workforce. Organizational behavior has its foundation within the diversity. The dominant value that espouse the gamut of the development is dependent on the value proposition of the workforce management. Level of diversity within the organization. Diversity states that everyone is individual and different, leads to equality, equality is equal access to opportunity and inclusion. Inclusion is a sense of belonging, feeling respected, valued for whom you are, feeling a level of supportive energy and commitment from others so that you can do your best at work. The type of diversity at the workplace. It include, it is multidimensional and include organizational dimensions, which include the functional level or classification, work content field, division or department unit group, seniority, work location, union or political affiliation, management status. External dimensions, which include the geographic location, income, personal habits, recreational habit, religion, educational background, work experience, appearance, parental status, marital status. Internal dimensions include age, gender, sexual orientation, physical ability, ethnicity, race and personality. Characteristics of diversity at the workplace include gender, special abilities, ethnicity, age, education. Age. Age diversity is characterized by the variation in the age group of the workforce. It is an ability of the organization to accept people across the age group. An organization is considered to have a productive workforce only if it has a diversified age categories. It serves for many advantages in the possible aspects. Age diversity caters to the good decision making skill as it will have a group of people with different age groups. Problem solving skills in an organization is very important and increasing age diversity in the workplace encourages creativity and adds lot of advantage to it. The experience of elderly workforce and enthusiasm of the young workforce add to the higher productivity of the organization. It becomes the responsibility of the organization to learn how to deal with the young employees and who have values markedly different from those of their older counterparts. In a mixed age workforce where the company value knowledge, experience and skill above the age, seniority or gender, employees of all ages have the opportunity to teach, share and learn from one another. Second is gender. Gender diversity at the workplace accounts for the equal treatment and acceptance of both males and females within the organization. Diversity adds value to the company's bottom line due to the different viewpoints and backgrounds of the diverse individual. Comprehensive ecosystem of the diversified workforce will act as a flag bearer
for increased participation. Best in the class companies have initiated change program that ingrain gender diversity in all aspects of the business. Specifically, those companies are more likely to have change agent and role models at all level of organization. They have also developed and communicated a compelling change story to support the program, policies, processes that they have put in place. Initially, the company should engage with the employees and give them the opportunity to unleash their knowledge, skills and implement the innovative ideas which can drive the organization forward. Secondly, if one wants to achieve the real benefits of the gender diversity, an organization should carefully handle the gender balance which lead to the better business performance in certain business units. Gender The disparity between the workforce stands to be present at the various levels like limited employment opportunities, unequal wages, poor sources of promotion, disparity in work assignment. Third is specially abled workforce. According to the census 2011, there are 2.68 crore persons with disability in India. About 1.34 crores persons with disabilities are in the employable age that is of 15 to 59 years. Although as per the Skill Development Act of 1998, National Skill Authority should consist of one disabled person who will represent the interest of the disabled people. Very few measures are taken in this direction. Under the Equal Opportunity Act 2010, employers must make reasonable adjustments for the person offer employment and to an existing employee with a disability to enable them to perform the genuine and reasonable requirements of the job. For example, a factory provide a widened doorways and ramp access to all the common areas for the employees with disability. The law covers all type of the employers and employment relationship from the traditional employment relationship to independent contractor engagement. The only type of employment not covered is work done on the voluntary or unpaid basis. Although an organization may be required to make the reasonable adjustments for the volunteers with disability in certain circumstances, there is a requirement of awareness for the employers as well as the employee in terms of creating more employment opportunities and making those opportunities more sustainable. Creating workplace for the user friendly for the disabled sections of the workforce is the need of an hour. Accessibility standard need to be considered before the construction of the buildings. The next is ethnic diversity. The term Ethnicity refers to the ethnic composition of the group or the organization. Workplace diversity initiatives are legal imperative in many countries. Moreover, a workforce diversity initiates improve organizational adaptability and competitive advantage as well as reduce the legal risk to the enterprise. Despite knowing this, many enterprises are unsure of how to implement the sustainable and credible diversity initiatives. This guide is a systematic approach to preparing, implementing, monitoring and diversity policy in the workplace. Clear definitions and concrete example allow the user to implement the diversity policy that is aligned to the enterprise value and strategic objectives. A group of people whose members identify each other through such factors as a common heritage, culture, ancestry, language, dialect, history, identity, identify and geographic origin. It includes the persons from the range of the background, including the indigenous and tribal people, people from the Africa, Asia, Roma, and the migrant workers. To build the inclusive and harmonious workplaces, both the employee and the managers play the important role. Organization should equip them with the relevant knowledge and skills and encourage them to display the attributes and behavior to foster the inclusive and the harmonious workplaces. Organizations can build competencies to foster inclusive and harmonious workplaces by embedding them in the formal HR practices. The advantages of the diversified workforce and PMSR increase in productivity, increase in creativity, language skills, positive reputation. Increase in productivity. Diversity within the workforce create an avenue for amalgamation of the ideas and thought process. People from different background, when they come together, they create a conducive environment. It enhances the sense of commitment for the employee 
wherein an employee feels more connected to the organization. This ultimately results in fine tuning the organizational efficiency. Next is increase in creativity. There is a cross fertilization of ideas when the group is heterogeneous. It is well understood that the employees from the diverse backgrounds bring in the variety of the solution on how to achieve a common goal. In highly competitive market, brainstorming is very essential. Some companies have successfully created innovative processes by taking ideas from several employees. Language skills. Multiple cultures within the organization increase the performance of the company at the global level. When the workforce is skilled in different languages, it becomes easy to understand the culture. Efficient and cultural productive activities such as gatekeeping keeps the flexibility of modern communication. Language skilled personnel as gatekeeper inevitably brings with it the risk that the power will be used in counterproductive ways filtering, distorting or even blocking transmission and therefore impeding rather than facilitating the flow of information in the organization. So whistles, it is important to have diverse language skills within an organization. It is also of the great importance that language skilled personnel do not emerge as a sources of organizational dysfunction themselves. Positive repetition. Repetition of the organization plays important role in drawing diverse workforce wherein the organization can attract and retain the workforce. The top talent is no longer represented by a homogeneous group, but one representing people from many different backgrounds and life experiences. The behavior pattern of the employees also create an impact on the productivity. Now let us understand the advantages of a diversified workforce and PMS. Attract and retain talent that add a competitive advantage to any organization. Feeling included and appreciated increases the loyalty and feeling of belongingness. Language skill pool is increased and propels the organization forward either to compete in the international global world or to increase its diverse customer base. Understanding how the United States fits into the world picture is crucial. By relating to the people of all backgrounds, Americans will gain a greater perspective on how different cultures operate and experience greater success in the global business as a result. The average American believe that this country's residents account for about 25% of the world's population. People from the outside our borders are not surprised to learn that the figure is actually less than 5%. Thus, with all the above advantages of the diversified workforce, it becomes all more necessary to have a performance management system which goes in sync with these diversities. The PMS of the organization needs to give the weightage to the various diversity types and create an environment devoid of inequalities and biasness. The reviewing and reporting officers need to be sensitized about the various cultural paradigms and the diversities before the performance evaluation system so as to understand the differences and be justified. The major reasons for increasing the diversity, the recognition and the desires for diverse viewpoints, legislation and lawsuits, rapid growth increase in the international business, competitive pressures, changing workplace demographics which includes such as age, gender, ethnicity, education etc. HR approach towards diversity management and PMS. The HR may adopt the diversity enlargement in which the goal is to change the organization culture through changing the composition of the workforce. Strategy adopted is recruit employees from the diverse backgrounds and assumptions are new hires will change the culture by their mere presence, no need for additional intervention. Another approach is diversity sensitivity. In this, the goal is the, to overcome the adversity and to promote the productive communication and collaboration. The strategy adopted is to train to increase the sensitivity and improve communication with the assumptions that increased sensitivity to differences will affect the performance. The another approach is cultural audit. The underlying goal is to identify the obstacle faced by the employee of diverse backgrounds and modify company's practices accordingly. The strategy adopted here is to audit the current practices through the survey and focus groups and generate changes to address these deficiencies. 
the, with the assumption that problems are caused by the dominant culture group in the organization and needs to be addressed by the group. The another approach is the strategy for achieving the organizational outcomes. The goal here is to achieve the organizational goals through the diversity management. The strategy adopted is to integrate the diversity management with HR policy areas and other company strategic choices. The assumption is diversity management practices have to be linked to desired individual and organizational outcomes. Let us study the diversity enlargement. The primary objective of this approach it is to increase the participation of the individuals from different ethnicity and cultural backgrounds. The objective is to focus on demographic composition of the workforce participation. Employees from the different backgrounds will bring desired outcomes and overall productivity. Acceptance of the employees increases as the participation is more diverse. Organizations are also adopting policies wherein the diversity is encouraged and this is applicable to all the stages of organization. Second is diversity sensitivity. Once the employee has joined the organization, providing essential avenues for the growth and development of the career prospects add to the sense of belongingness. Diversity approach recognizes the potential difficulties introduced by bringing together the individuals from the diverse backgrounds and cultures in the workplace. Sensitivity towards the culture needs special efforts and program. A cordial relation within the employees is emphasized by reinforcing stereotypes and highlighting intergroup differences rather than improving the communication through understanding and common interests. Next is cultural audit. Post the implementation of the cultural sensitive programs, it is important to identify the applicability and the success factor of these programs. Audit aims at identifying the applicability of the programs and policies. When audit is performed by outside consultants, by attaining data, it yields transparent records. Employee satisfaction with diversity is one of the 12 dimensions assessed by the survey. The results are used to assess force commitment and performance in achieving the diverse workforce. The cultural audit at regular intervals help in identification of the loopholes within the cultural acceptance and viability. It needs to be worked towards providing equal opportunities in terms of better opportunities to grow. Next is strategy for achieving organizational outcomes. This approach proposed by Kosick and Lobel in 1996 as a comprehensive framework for HR diversity management focuses on diversity management and says as a means for achieving organizational end, not as an end in itself. This strategy is effective when the managers had to recognize the connection between the organizational objective and desired outcomes. Because unethical and deviant behavior not only can impact the well-being of the employees but also can have a detrimental effect on the individual and organizational performance. One way for organization to screen out potentially unethical individual is to give the job applicants some form to overt or personality biased integrated test. Let us now conclude what we have studied in this module. The two of the major dynamic realities facing the modern organization are diversity and ethics. Diversity exists where there is a, an all-inclusive mixture of differences and similarities in terms of age, gender, ethnicity, education and other characteristics. There are a number of reasons for the rise in the diversity of the organization including increasing number of women, minorities, older employees in the workforce, legislative ruling that now required the organization to ensure equal opportunity to the women, minorities, older employees and those challenged by the disability. Every ethnical group or issues represent a challenge to today's organization and must be given recognition and attention to be carefully managed. That is all students. Thank you.